Hi Year 10, welcome to your online lesson about longshore drift and spits. Um, in this lesson we're going to be looking at how sediment is transported around the coastline. So after it's been eroded and the, the waves have picked up material, we need to understand how that sediment gets moved around and some of the landforms that can be created as a result of this. So your first job is to have a look at this diagram that you have in your booklets. Okay, you've got um, sort of a cross section of the ocean, we can see some waves, and we can see some different size particles. We've got some bigger rocks down here, some slightly smaller ones here, some really small bits of sand here, and then almost invisible, okay, are maybe some of the, the minerals that we can't see in the water. What I'd like you to do now, I'd like you to pause this video, and I'd like you to have a go at completing the boxes on your sheet using the keywords in the box below. See if you can explain how each of these different processes of transport um, are occurring within the sea. Have a go, pause the video now and have a go at that. Okay. So hopefully you've managed to have a go at that. We're going to go through the answers here and, and we're going to start actually um, down here with traction. OK, so traction is a process that occurs when large and hopefully you chose boulders. OK, so larger rocks um, are in this case dragged or rolled across the seabed. So that's what you should have had. For traction. Traction is when the waves don't have the energy to pick the material up, but they maybe have the energy just to roll it along the seabed. Okay. Following on from that, the process of saltation. So it says here, saltation is a hopping or hopefully you chose bouncing motion of particles, which are two, and then hopefully you said here, heavy to be suspended, as in they can't be picked up, okay? In this case, um, the most likely thing would be pebbles. So small rocks and stones that the waves don't have the energy to be able to pick up and carry for long periods of time, but they might be able to pick them up very briefly and then they drop them again. And then they might get picked up again and dropped and the pebble almost bounces along the seabed. So traction is where it's rolling. Saltation is a bouncing or hopping motion of the sediment. Third, then we have suspension. It says here suspension is when very small particles is the word we should have chosen here. OK, and for example, sand, not minerals in this case, sand are carried or suspended in the water. So literally small grains of sand will be light enough to be picked up and floating around in the water. Which leaves us then with the last two blanks to fill in for solution. Now you notice we've come across solution before when we've looked at um, the processes of erosion. So solution occurs when minerals so particles that we are, are too small that we can't even see them, when minerals are dissolved in the water. So this is a process um, of transport that we can't see happening. OK, so these are the four ways in which material can be moved around by the waves. We have traction, OK, which is this kind of dragging or rolling action. We have saltation, which is a bouncing or hopping motion. We have suspension, which is when particles are carried along, literally suspended in the water. And we have solution, which is when minerals are dissolved within the water. So that's the first step um, in, this, in this lesson, understanding what those four processes mean. We're now going to go and have a look at um, the process of longshore drift. Down at the bottom of your page, um, you've got a completed diagram of this process of longshore drift. But I think it's worthwhile um, us looking at 
at this process from start to finish. I'm actually going to draw you a diagram of this process of longshore drift um, from, from start to finish so we can see how that process is, is building up. First thing we need to understand, we're observing this process from the air. So I want you to imagine a kind of a seagull looking down on the coastline. Okay, so this line here, this represents the shoreline. Okay, so we're going to have the sea here and we're going to have the land here. Okay, and the beach is kind of in between that, isn't it? Okay, so the sea's here and the land's here and this line represents um, the shoreline. Now what will happen is um, we often find that the wind that approaches the coastline doesn't approach it necessarily um, kind of at, at 90 degrees to the to the coastline it doesn't come straight in like this it comes in often at a bit of an angle okay so this arrow here represents the wind we actually have a term for this we call this the prevailing wind okay this is the direction that the wind most often comes from in this case we're going to have it coming um, from the southwest okay now we know that the wind creates waves so what we would also find is, as well as the wind coming in, in this direction, the waves would also be approaching this, the, the coastline, approaching the beach in this direction as well. Okay. Now, when those waves hit the coast, when they hit the beach, that water is going to move up the beach at the same angle. Okay. We know that when waves approach the beach, they then, they then move up the beach, and we call that the swash okay so the swash and the wind and the waves are all going in the same direction the wind is blowing at an angle that makes the waves move at an angle and the swash will move at the same angle um, eventually though that wave is going to run out of energy as it runs up the beach and that water needs to go back to the sea what happens though is the water doesn't go back the way it came it doesn't go back down at an angle like that the water will go straight back down the beach, 90 degrees to the coastline, perpendicular to the coastline, um, like that, because gravity is pulling the material down the beach in that, in that direction. Remember, we call that movement the backwash of the wave, don't we? So in this case, the swash is going at an angle, but the backwash is coming back down at 90 degrees. It's making like a, a little right angle triangle there. OK, then obviously another wave is going to come in and do the same thing. So we're going to have the swash at an angle and then the backwash going straight back down the beach. And this will happen again and again. OK, and we'll always find that the swash is going at an angle and the backwash is coming straight back down the beach. Now, if we were to observe just the movement of one pebble, imagine we were just to look at one um, particle, one pebble or grain of sand, and we thought about how, where it would go, um, what would happen is the pebble would be picked up by the wave and it would be swashed in this direction, and then the backwash would bring it down here. So the pebble would, would end up then at this point. OK, another wave might pick it up. It would swash it here and it would backwash it to here. And suddenly our pebbles ended up over here. And then another wave will come in and pick the pebble up and swash it in that direction and backwash it in that direction. OK, until our pebble ends up at this end of the beach. So we can think about this process of longshore drift, moving material, in this case, from left to right along the beach. So the, the process of long shore drift is moving material along the beach in that direction. Okay. Um, you have got, um, as I said, a completed copy of this diagram in your booklets. All right. Um, what I suggest you do now is pause this video and have a watch of um, the video that I've sent you the link to. Um, it should be appearing in the top of the screen now as well. If you click on that video, um, that will give you a little bit of context about the process of longshore drift in action. And then I want you to come back to this video because we're going to, we're going to explain that process in words.
Okay, so now you've had a watch of that other video, hopefully you've been able to see that process in action a little bit more clearly. What I want us to do now is to build up um, an explanation which just talks through that process of longshore drift um, in a nice concise paragraph that we're going to write into our into our folders here. So the first thing that we need to say about longshore drift is about the action of the wind. So most importantly, we want to mention that um, the prevailing wind approaches the shore at an angle. Okay, if we remember back to our diagram, the prevailing wind is approaching the shore at an angle. As a result of that, the waves are also going to approach the coast at an angle. So let's say that as our second point. As a result, the waves are also going to approach the shore at the same angle as the wind. The next thing that happens, if we look back at our diagram, is that the swash will move the material up the beach at an angle. So we could say the swash of a wave moves the material up the beach at an angle. Then, again, if we have a little look back at our diagram, the backwash of the wave will bring the pebbles straight back down the beach. So then the backwash of the wave will return to the sea in a straight line. Okay, we're going to put in brackets 90 degrees to the shore. Okay. We then need to explain the fact that this process will repeat over time. So this process repeats over time. eventually moving material down the coastline. Okay, so as a result of that prevailing wind approaching the shore at an angle, the waves are approaching at an angle as well. The waves move the material up the beach at an angle and the backwash brings it back down 90 degrees to the shoreline. And this process repeats over time, eventually moving the material along the coastline. So the next thing I want to do is to now have a look at how longshore drift can lead to the formation of um, a landform that we call a spit. You've got a diagram of this process in your, in your booklet, but I think it's also important that we maybe think about how we've ended up in this situation. So what I'm going to do, we're going to have a look at this process kind of from start to finish here. So I want you to imagine that um, we've got uh, the coastline here. OK. Um, we've got um, a headland sticking out to sea. We've got a bay on one side of it. Again, we're looking down on the on the coastline at this point. And maybe we've got a river coming out into the sea here as well. Okay. Now, if, for example, our wind was coming in at this angle, a bit like we had before um, with the process of longshore drift. If the wind was coming in at that angle there, what we'd find is longshore drift would be moving material along the coastline in that kind of zigzag pattern. Okay, And eventually what will happen is the sand will be moved along the beach until it reaches this headland here where the coastline changes direction. Now even though the coastline changes direction, 
the material is still going to move in the same direction as it was before. So the longshore drift is going to carry on moving that material and it's actually going to move it out to sea. So you can imagine that longshore drift is going to carry on going in the same direction as it was before because that's being driven by the wind. So what will happen is that our beach will actually grow out to sea. You actually find that the beach would grow out to sea like this, like a little finger of sand, okay, growing out into the sea. Now, over time, that spit is going to get larger and larger and it's going to grow more and more out into the ocean. And um, what it might do eventually is come so far out into the sea that it maybe experiences the wind coming from a different direction. So maybe um, we maybe have a kind of temporary change in um, the wind direction and then the wind starts to come from this direction instead of where it was coming before. What that change in wind direction will do is it will cause longshore drift to change direction. And what will happen is that the spit will curve at the end, okay, perhaps to reflect now the fact that longshore drift is operating in a, in a different direction. So this beach that we had here, all the sand and shingle on that beach, all the pebbles and sand will build themselves out into a into a beach that sticks out to sea okay, and curves around at the end. Okay. Now what will happen as well is material is going to be brought down by this river mouth. Um, the river is going to be carrying lots of very fine sand and mud down into the sea and lots of that material is going to collect behind the spit okay, and build up here um, into what we call um, a salt marsh. So the mud will build up and eventually um, plants and things will grow on that mud um, creating what we call a salt marsh behind the spit. So longshore drift is moving material along the coastline. The coastline changes direction and the spit grows out to sea. There's maybe a temporary change in the direction of the wind, which causes the, the spit to curve at the end. We actually call this a recurved end. You have that on your diagram. And then behind the spit, where it's very sheltered and um, protected from the waves coming in from this direction, okay, all the waves coming from this direction, the spit is sheltering that area behind it and that is going to grow into um, a salt marsh. What I'd like us to do now is see if we can um, again put some um, explanation to the stages of that process. So if we come back to our booklets, um, let's see if we can write now uh, a little passage of explanation that talks about how the spit um, is growing out to sea and why it's curving around at the end and why we find a salt marsh in the area behind it. So the first thing we might want to mention is about the process of longshore drift. So we could talk about how longshore drift um, is moving material or sediment along the coastline in the direction of the prevailing wind. can see that happening here. Longshore drift is moving because of that zigzag effect that would be going on that we mentioned earlier. So longshore drift is moving sediment along the coastline in the direction of the prevailing wind. That's kind of stage one on our diagram here. Okay. Stage two, we're thinking about what happens at this point here. Okay. So at point number two on the diagram, um, we can see that the coastline will eventually change direction okay i'm going to put in brackets there um, maybe that that's happening at a headland okay and the spit 
will grow out to sea. Okay, we can see that process starting to happen here. We then want to think about what's happening on the end of the spit for our third stage. So I'm just going to scroll down a bit on this uh, on this page a second. Um, so we want to think about this temporary change in the direction of the wind. Um, so a temporary change in wind direction. would cause the end of the spit to curve, and we're going to put in brackets, um, recurved end. That's what we call that little cooked tip on the end of the spit. The fourth part then refers to this salt marsh. Okay, so we can talk about how um, the area behind the spit is sheltered. Okay, so fine sediment, and I'm going to put in brackets sand and mud is deposited here, forming a salt marsh. Okay, so we have those four stages um, on our on our diagrams. We have longshore drift moving sediment along the coastline. We have the coastline eventually changing direction of the headland and the spit growing out to sea. We have a temporary change in the wind direction, which is causing the end of the spit to curve, and the area behind the spit being sheltered so that fine sediment is deposited, which forms a salt marsh. The final thing that could happen, and again, I'm just going to quickly sketch um, a, a little diagram of this. I want you to imagine um, in this example here that we haven't got a river coming down at this point. We've maybe just got another bay and we've got two headlands, one on either side. What would happen is if a spit was to grow out to sea here, and then eventually join back up with the land over here. Okay, cutting off this part behind the spit. Okay, this would form what we call a bar. Okay, a spit that grows out to sea and then joins back up with the land again is called a bar. Another example of what can happen is if the spit was to join an island. So um, let's imagine that we had our beach along this part of the coastline and we had um, a little island out here and longshore drift was moving the material, zigzagging it along here. What would happen eventually is that spit might grow out to sea and join onto um, our island at that point. And this would create um, what we call a tombolo. So lo locally to us, Chesil Beach is a really good example of a tombolo because Chesil Beach starts off as a as a spit okay and then grows out and actually joins up with Portland um, to form a tombolo. So I'd like us just to finish that part um, of this lesson by just filling those two bits in at the bottom of our page. If a spit joins back to the land it is known as a bar and if a spit joins up with an island it's known as a tombolo. So that concludes our lesson about longshore drift and spits. Um, make sure that you've completed all those activities in your booklet um, and then look out for our next video um, about the next set of landforms. We're going to have a look at beaches and sand dunes. Well done.